When you have a parabola that is in general form, a lot of times students are gonna make mistakes putting it into standard form. So in this video, I wanna highlight the most common mistakes students make when they're trying to put a, an equation or of a parabola that is in general form all the way over to standard form. Then we'll go ahead and graph it as well as find the parts. But before we get started, we need to understand what exactly is the standard form. And guess what? That is one of the first mistakes that students will make is they forget the standard form of a parabola. Knowing your standard form of a parabola for conic sections is going to be extremely important, especially when you're trying to identify the parts like the focus, the directrix, the vertex, as well as being able to graph it. That is like mistake number one. Students will just forget the form. That's usually where they make the mistake. Like they might know how to do all the work, but they forget exactly what the form was. So therefore they get the whole problem wrong. Now the next mistake is understanding how do we create this binomial squared? Notice in my general form, I don't have a binomial squared. I just have an x squared. We need to create this. And hopefully you're familiar with how we create a binomial squared. It's from completing the square. So if you remember like in our previous lessons you've learned when we're trying to complete the square, what I always like to tell students, you know, get all of your x's or whatever your variable you're trying to complete the square with now, um, all over to one side and get everything else to the other side. I like to do that just to kind of keep things simplistic. However, in this problem, we can actually use a little trick here to make our life a little bit easier. Notice how my x squared has a coefficient of two. And if you remember, when we're completing the square, we have to factor out a two. I like this 32 because I can factor out a two from the 32. So I'm actually gonna leave this here. Now to get my x's all to the same side, I'm gonna add a 16 x to over here and I'm gonna subtract the y to the other side. Now, I'm not gonna call it a mistake of subtracting a 32 to the other side, because you can definitely do that. And then you can go ahead and complete the square and actually get the exact same answer. This is actually just kind of a little bit of a tip and a trick that I want you to recognize is if you can factor out that 32 and it creates a perfect square trinomial for you, and that's something I notice here in this problem. However, students will still make a mistake, um, in this case, when they wanna go to complete the square and they forget they have this two here. So remember, when we are completing the square, we gotta get rid of this two, right? So you can either divide everything by two, or what else you can do is you can factor out the two, which in this case would be my preferred method. And the reason why I like to do that is because now what I've done is I've created that perfect square trinomial. You can see that this is a perfect square trinomial that can be now factored down into a binomial squared. Exactly what I was looking for. So here comes the other next mistake students will make. A lot of students will leave their equation like this. Negative y minus one, don't do that. You need to do is you need to have it exactly in this format. So what I mean by that is just think about putting parentheses. Even if you don't need the parentheses, just put the parentheses there. Have your quantity squared and your quantity squared. Like even if you had like y plus two, put parentheses around it so you know what is in that form. Because remember, there is a four p that is in front of that y, always. And in this case, by factoring out the negative, I see that that is going to be a negative four p. However, the next mistake students will make is they'll leave the coefficient for the uh, on the square term. Do you guys look over in this form that the coefficient is in front of the linear term, not my square term? So what I need to do then to put this in my standard form is I need to divide by two on both sides. Now I get a x plus four. Now I have completed it in standard form. Um, so now what I can do is I can now start completing the elements of identifying the parts of my quadratic. The first part is obviously when we are in the standard form is we can identify vertex as well as our value P. Remember P is the distance from your vertex as to your focus as well as to your directrix. So in this case, my P, or I'm sorry, my vertex is going to be a negative four comma negative one. Now, as far as I just identifying the P, remember we have four P is equal to a negative one half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set that, write that equation, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and solve for P. Okay, I have a vertex negative four, negative one, and I have my P is going to be negative one eight. So what that means is the direction here uh, from my vertex to my focus is going to be negative. That means my parabola is going to be opening down, right? Because whenever we have something X squared, that's either it opens up or it opens down. If my P is negative, that means my parabola is now going to be facing down. If it was positive, it'd be opening up. So what I like to do when I'm going to graph this is I like to just go ahead and, and identify like the general shape um, that we're dealing with for our parabola. So I'm not gonna be trying to be perfect here. Um, but what I am gonna do though, is now identify what my focus would be. My focus is gonna be like right in here. Okay, and I'm just gonna give a little F to denote that. Um, now to identify what my focus is, remember what you're gonna do is the focus is going to be difference here of subtracting for your value P. Now again, you can think about the P here. This negative is just telling you the direction here, but my value of P is going to be a positive one eight. So I'm just gonna be subtracting this negative one eight. And again, remember we can simplify one as an eight over eight. So technically we can go ahead and rewrite this as a negative nine over eight. And then for the directrix, all we're simply gonna do is going to be adding our P, which is going to be taking it 
over in this case. Now again, since it's a negative one or negative eight over eight, if you add a one eighth, that'd be like a negative seven eighths. And you can see in this case, I'm gonna write y is equal to a negative seven eighths because that is going to be my horizontal line. Now in this video, we had a lot of mistakes, but if you wanna know some tips that can make you avoid a lot of these mistakes, then check out the next video I have for you here.